I bought a Dodge Challenger a couple months ago, and I'm here at Tucson Dragway in Tucson, Arizona to not only see it for the first time in person, but pick it up. But this isn't just your run-in-the-mill Challenger, fellas. This 1970 Dodge Challenger RT is known as the Vanishing Paint Challenger, and you might have seen it on Roadkill or Roadkill Garage. I only know as much about it as you do. So I'm going to do the right thing and jump in this car and try to drive 1,700 miles back home to Tennessee. And to make things even more fun, we're going to stop at the Pima Air and Space Museum, the legendary Tombstone, Arizona, try to catch a couple other museums, and we're going to swing through Texas and look at a 1935 Ford pickup that I also bought sight unseen a couple months ago as well. This seems carefully thought through. Nope completely shooting from the hip. Great. Before we dig in and take a close look at the car here, I wanted to give you a little bit of history on it, or at least what a guy knows. The car did not belong to Roadkill, it actually belonged to David Freiberger, and before him, Steve Dulcich owned it, and get this, he bought it from his friend for like 300 bucks. He was going to use it as a parts car, but never really got around to it, and it sat behind a shop for like 15 or 16 years. Long story short, they ended up doing some horse trading, and David ended up with the car. And that's when we saw it on Roadkill Garage, where initially it was just, can we make the junk run and drive, which they did. And then that escalated, turned into, can we make it handle decent and stop. And then eventually we saw it on Roadkill, where they drove it across country and road course the car. Then it kind of just fell off the map. Now I am thrilled to be the current owner of this car. So let's go take a close look at this thing. On the exterior here, it doesn't look like anything has changed with the car. It looks exactly like I remember seeing it on Roadkill. I got all the stickers there from that SCCA event. It's been painted 79 or times at least. A bunch of different greens and whatnot. A little bit of rust on the car that you don't see on the television set. Back here is just shot, you know, but the sticker makes up for it. It would probably need quarters if a guy cared, but I don't. This one's fairly decent. And this rubber down here would probably hide anything that's back here. Steve Dulcich was drag racing this last night at the duct tape drags and just doing rolling John Force burnouts. It looked awesome. Look at that. Rocker panels, pretty decent. Really good, actually. Fenders look nice. 74 different greens. This is that fiberglass hood that Steve painted. No idea if the headlights work or the tail lights or anything like that. I guess we'll find out. We got some tread on these yet. Oh, maybe not the rears though so much. That's okay. We'll get to the inside here in just a second. I think we should continue tradition. Try to get this trunk popped open see what that tells us. This is a true story. This car has no keys, not even an ignition stick. And when I asked Steve, how do you get into the trunk? We both kind of paused, locked eyes, and at the same exact time we said, flat screwdriver. So I brought one of them with, see what we got here. Oh, okay, yeah. Looks, you know, there's tape and rust. It's normal. It's always comforting when you don't see like head gaskets and stuff like that in here. I think this, what is it, a baby blanket? I think this is strategery. Probably keeps the trunk from rattling or something. So I'm just going to leave it there. We got a little bit of weight reduction, fellas. But it's already been repaired on mostly. See this tape here? So that's good. A lot of trunk space. What do we got? Car cover, I think that's it. Gotta protect on that paint, you know. No, I think the real reason is, I don't think there's glass in this. I've never seen 
side windows up in this car. So this probably gets thrown on it when it's gonna get rainy and whatnot, but that is it for the trunk. Door handle works, off to a great start. I don't know if I should be concerned or what, but there really is no smell in this car. It's very neutral. It's just a hint of like dirt. That's it. There's quite a bit of stuff in here actually. Huh. Got a slip here. What's this? 1312 at 34. Well, that can't be right. I don't know what that is. Really basic interior here. Not a lot going on. Got a taco meter, some gauges over there. Water bottles. Ooh, we got duct tape. Actual duct tape. That's nice. But look at this. We got a throw pillow. Matches the rear seat even. Leave that there. Beach towel. Never know. Got some silver bullets. Nicotine gum. Even got some tools thrown in. I'll be dipped. Brand new. Pockets. Sprayway. PNC. That's a really nice vice grip, actually. Well, thanks, guys, for all the extras. Appreciate it. This looks... Did I already work on this somehow? I must have. This looks headlight-ish, probably. That must have been the dimmer switch. And those are notorious for failing in all makes. That's the first place you go when you don't got headlights. What else do we got? Ooh, we got a slapstick. These are probably the best OE performance shifter there ever was. You just put it down at first, literally just slap it forward, you get second, slap it forward again, you get drive. Impossible to miss a gear, basically. I'm thinking, yep, okay, well, there's no ignition at all, so I'm guessing that this is ignition and start. Clearly, I'm going to have to change that. I might just zip tie it over here, you know because it's not ergonomical there. Floors look pretty solid. I mean, there's like no rust in the floors. Probably why there's not a bad smell in here. There's no headliner, there's just no fabric. Half of a seat, you know, we'll leave that. Nothing wrong there. Now from following the car's build, Steve built a 360 for this, should have a rebuilt transmission four nine inch rear end but i've never seen any of this in person of course this is just bent there we go this one is too i'll be dipped got it fingers are stuck okay Let's see what we got under the power barn wow that actually looks really nice no hood springs wouldn't expect any more, you know. Brand new battery. There's a lot of new parts in this thing, actually. Let me find something to propylate this open so we can take a closer gander on her, you know. Hood prop, 9,000, coming in hot. Can we go like this and like this? Oh, yeah. So this is an LA 360, which is basically found in everything Chrysler up until I believe early 90s in the pick -em up trucks. But this one's been gone through by Steve. It's got Edelbrock heads, Edelbrock intake, TTI headers, some fancy torque twister camshaft in there and all that stuff. And I think it's actually bored 40 over as well, which I could be wrong, but I think it actually makes it a 367 or somewhere around there. But as you can see, they've pretty well gone through everything mechanical, even updated the bleep bloops and everything. It's even got brand new belts. The fill filter could maybe be changed, but aluminum radiator and the whole line. Looks like it slightly might get hot. I don't know. We'll keep an eye on it. Brand new battery. Moses sandals. You know, at this point, I don't know if a bunch of new parts makes me as nervous or more nervous. Yep, yep. <sighs> Clearly this rig's got a bunch of new parts in it, but it doesn't mean something couldn't happen still. And I have no idea what's going on here. I think the best thing to do is just kind of do that, throw the 
backpack in the seat here and just hit the highway, start covering some miles and just figure it out as we go. First stop, Pima Air and Space Museum. I should maybe bring this. Do a first start on this rig. I'm not sure if I should pump this or not. Maybe I'll give her one. And just see what happens here. Wow. Sounds great. I was driving through the staging lines here to get back to our camp and ran across these cars. They haven't loaded them up yet to ship them back. Of course, the Crusher Impala. All these cars are so much cooler in person. The Hemi Grammy, this is a new build. Look at that. Literally Hemi above the fender. I like the notes, water pump, manual valve body. This is the same shift pattern that the independent Chevelle has pull back for gears. Of course the muscle truck. Can't forget this. <laughs> that sure did take a wallop, didn't it? Nice seats. So we've actually got our entire family here in Tucson because we were at the duct tape dregs last night. So Jessica and the kids are here. What do you think of the car? I am so obsessed. Isn't it cool? Yes. Jessica's actually volunteered to pull lawsuit in the trailer home while I drive the Challenger, except maybe like Dallas, Fort Worth or something. I might trade you. That's a good have idea. Have you drive the car? This thing's got some wide hips on her, but I think the, we'll go to the Air and Space Museum first, mm -hmm. check things out there, yep. and then we'll go straight to Tombstone after that. That sounds super fun. All right, let's get loaded up. All right. fuel real quick I already learned something about the car heard all the rattling she's actually got glass in it I'm not sure it kind of seems like it wants to roll up too so that might be an option for later you can see those have not been up in a long time I wonder if the other side has glass I've never seen the glass up in this car even when they road tripped it and everything so I'm not quite sure what the yeah there's one there and one here I'll be dipped. Well, that's good news in case we run into some rain or late at night gets a little bit chilly. So that's pretty nice. I don't care who you are. You're nothing like a tuna sandwich. Throwing some groceries down the yap here. It looks like the museum's right down the road actually. So we'll be there in just a minute. Made it to the Pima Air and Space Museum. At first glance, this place is massive. I don't know, we were driving for 58 days and there's just planes and planes and planes. Something like 80 acres. So let's get in here and check this place out.
splash. One splash. Good kill, good kill. Take that down to uh, 3,000 here, Monster. The uh, splash, 160 at 96. Although not automotive related, I could tell you that this is honestly the most incredible museum I've ever been to in my life. All of it. Put it on your list, fellas. Well, let's load back up, get some more miles down. Well, we made it to historic Tombstone, Arizona. The car is running fantastic, and I've got this thing wound up tighter than a round bale, 3,000, 3,500 RPM, but it's only getting to like 160 degrees, which is fantastic. Might be a little bit different in traffic without a shroud, but I guess we'll find out. We're going to walk downtown, see what kind of shenanigans we can get into here. <laughs> good time. We went to a little outdoor theater. They did a little gunfight. It's pretty funny that we jumped on a tour. You get on a trolley, they run you all over town. Got to go up to Boot Hill Cemetery. We're gonna stop by a gas station, grab some snacks, pop off, and I know just the place. We're gonna try to run as long as we can tonight until the kids get wore out. Hopefully we're on the east side of El Paso. I'd like to get into Bogota, Texas tomorrow while there's still some daylight so we can check out that 1935 Ford pickup I bought. I really want to look it over and make a parts list because, yep, I'm going to come back, try to get this thing running, and also drive that home. But now that I know we got taillights, that's a big victory with your run in the dark. So we're going to switch kids. Bentley's going to jump in with me. We got brakes. We got a seat belt. I think this even has insurance. I, I don't know. Exit 322, mystery of the desert. Can't just drive by that. The thing is in here. Let's go see what the thing is. I don't know. This is a massive gift store. That's for sure. 
I mean, it's got a little bit of everything, including hot sauce. Might have to grab some of that. Oh, and this. Definitely that. Some sort of alien shirt. Kind of looks like my brother. I won't tell anybody, though. And I'm going to have to get this rug down here, too, apparently. Dang it. Just getting loaded up. It's a big... Careful, that stand looks jigglier than John Goodsman neck. You don't want that to fall over. You might be mopping floors for, I don't know, long time, kid. What are these again? Pyro Missigans scissors? Those agates. Agates, okay. What if dinosaurs were ruled by aliens from another planet? Like those guys, I guess. Beep, boop, 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 boop. Roger, you missed a turn. This is a lot bigger in here than one would expect. This guy here looks really intense, like he's trying to track you down for your car's extended warranty or something. Pew 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 pew. Roar. Netflix. Boop. Well, I think this explains a lot. <laughs> Completely random, but I like this McCormick Deering here. Really nice. They had trouble getting rubber during these years, fellas, so they went with the steel wheels. 1850s horse-drawn double seat behuggy. She's got a lift kit on it, see there? This is the old food wagon. You'd put everything up in that. Throw the fam in there, a couple of cans of beans. I don't know. What do you haul? Pack? 1856? That's, you know, it's getting old. What board wagon? I think this is your last ride. They used to slide the coffins up in these. Could be wrong. Probably not. This is actually really neat. And thank you to Boland Travel Centers for putting this up. That's really cool. And they actually do have a lot of legit history in here, which is really cool. I like that stuff. It's pretty neat. We got a Rolls Royce. Slick looking units. He I looks confused though. Scared me so bad. Did he? <laughs> Apparently it's not an alien and I just yeah. He popped up. Yeah. Oh, there's my great great grandpa. <laughs> what is it? I don't know, what do you think? An alien? Think so? Is that a baby alien? I don't know. It looks like a mummy. Let's see a face and another face. There's a snake back there. That's creepy. Mm. Well, we came and saw, and I still, I don't know what's going on here. I was tracing the wiring here for the running lights and brake lights, and I think how they got this wired up here is 12 volt positive out of this with the headlights flipped on up here, going to this black wire. That seems to be the running lights. It's gonna be a lot brighter if I just take this and jam it between these two posts. And I believe that's brake lights. Well, we're gonna see really quick. That should be on. You know, that's not too bad actually. So we should be able to get away with that. Just get her on the highway and don't get into situations where we need the brakes a lot. That's pretty good. And then I guess I could we stop at a parts store or something I could wire in another switch tap off of this plug into these two leads and just have a momentary button or something so when I hit the brakes I can hit a button or I can even tape a horn button to the actual brake pedal so when I step on that it'll fire up the brake lights but this is good enough for tonight gotta top the fuel off looks like we got 7.9 gallons in grab some food somewhere and Keep on keeping on, huh, bud? Yep. Sitting here waiting for our food in the drive through The temp did get up to 200, so I shut her down, but Bentley got the side glass rolled almost all the way up. That'll be a little better, huh? Yeah. All right, we got some cheeseburgers, some sweet tea filled up. Let's see if we can get into East Texas tonight. <laughs> Mm -hmm. 
another fuel stop and switching kiddos. I got my human hood prop 9000 holding this up. Just took a peek under here and got some oil coming down pretty good. Got to looking and it's just all the way back. You can see it on the transmission pan, the suspension, everything. So I'm going to take a closer look at this and see what it is. It might be power steering, actually. Yeah, there you go. That's power steering fluid, which that's okay for tonight. I can deal with that. We don't have much farther to go tonight, so we're just going to let that be since it's not engine oil. And we'll deal with that in the morning. I'm not seeing anything immediate. Actually, looks like it's weeping on the front, maybe. Hmm. Well, we'll just do the right thing. Shut the hood and pretend we didn't see it. morning 78 9 or 12 early o'clock one eye isn't working yet it's early is what I'm saying got in at like midnight 1 a.m. something like that we did not make it all the way to Texas we were west of El Paso but we did get over the Rio Grande which stands for Big Burrito River no that seems wrong if we were to get back on track since we didn't meet our goal yesterday we'd have to run 805 miles today to get to Bogota Texas and that's unlikely that's a long drive and I mean longer than Mike Austin blocked the car in last night with the truck and tray more nosed her in here and then I even threw the cover on you know not only to protect the beautiful finish the car has but curiosity keeps the cats or whatever they say and this strikes some curiosity, but maybe less than a green challenger with roadkill down the whole side. In any who and way, it's still here this morning. That's neat. I think we got a few things I want to do. We're going to check on C10, the lawsuit, make sure that it's not dancing around in there and at least has one strap on. That'd be cool. And then I feel weird, like not working on the car actually so maybe we'll check the fluids or something and then we can maybe even pull a sparkulator out and hook a peeper on it it was built by david and steve so i'm sure it's tuned finer than a bug's ear but it'll give me something to do and we can at least confirm then we'll throw the wife and kids in all the luggage and we're just going to hit the road and see how far we can get today so lawsuit to C10 actually belongs to Bentley here. So I make him check the straps when we stop, don't I? Yeah. Oh, and these two look like they're on. That's a good start. Oh, we do have a fuel leak. Gonna have to add that to our list. The uh, fuel tank started leaking, fellers. And then we've got the trailing arms to figure out as well. And there was something else, I can't remember. Oh, the ignition now sticks. You can't turn the key. So we're gonna have to deal with that too. It's kind of nice we finally got to bring this truck out, run it a little bit so we can get a to-do list down. Good up there? Oh, the table just fell on him. Good? Okay. There's the numbers from Drag Race in it. We also did a burnout competition and it did just fine. Even kicked in Posse a little bit there, fellers. Trying out the Pittsburgh 200 hood prop this morning. Stout. Had the Anna theft turned on, you know, which is just unhooking the positive cable. Not gonna do much. But I did also take the ignition key out last night. Bentley, you can put that back in for me. Probably also not gonna do much, which is why I kind of blocked it in the corner over here. Can you reach? 
give her a nice little hit and then twist it. By the way, this car is running absolutely fantastic. Did not skip a beat last night at all. In fact, we were getting just a hair over 15 miles to the gallon. That's mind bottling, 3,000, 3,000 plus RPM. Really the only issue is this power steering pump, which is just an OE unit. And they're not designed for 3,500 RPM for 10 hours straight, I would think anyway. So I'm gonna just pour some snake oil on that today, I think, and that'll bring that all the way around. Should check on the oils though. What do we got? Overfull actually. Quite a bit of fuel in it. We probably should change this here pretty soon. Also tastes a lot of zinc, which is good. This has a hydraulic flat tap at cam in it, so you want all them vitamins, you know. Uh, Jessica's gonna pull a sparkulator out for us real quick. I'm gonna go organize the trailer a little bit more. All right, this is just more of a curiosity thing. Just because we have such a long way to go, we wanna make sure that everything is looking good. All right, well, we can tell that it's definitely running a little lean because there's not soot all the way around the base ring. Um, but running lean at partial throttle is actually not a bad thing. We want that for economy. If we were running like full throttle, then that would obviously be an issue, but this isn't too bad. What do we got? Is this one here? Yeah, it's a little lean, but it's not terrible. Yeah, that should be okay. Heat range is actually perfect. You could tell by the strap on these from the base ring to the end here, you want the change in color kind of halfway or in the middle. And that's exactly where this one is. So perfect heat range, looking pretty good for cruising. So we're not gonna touch these at all, just plop them back in. You just check the one over there too? Yeah, this one is not showing any signs of that at all, of being lean. Let me see that one. Oh yeah, got a slit ring all the way around. Yep. Huh. So running just a little bit more lean on that yeah. front cylinder, but these look fine. Just stick it back in. Yeah. See how she does this morning on a cold start. Gotta find my button. There it is. Pressure's rising, 40, 50, 60. This Holly fuel making happener is dialed right in. A little cold blooded, but pretty typical old V8. Look at this weld from the assembly line from the quarter to roof seam. Just enough to get her right and then fill her in, you know. And I noticed this this morning too. That's all that power steering juice flipping up on the back there. And it's also putting a really nice glaze on the bottom, which is a rust inhibitor, really. There's that Ford nine inch rear end, rear sway bar. These leaf springs are tucked in a little bit as well new stop later lines and then look at the fuel line holder upper it's absolutely perfect thought i heard some metal dragging when we were hitting bumps last night this is going to be the culprit right there and you know it's not going anywhere so i'm going to do the right thing and just ignore that as well look how clean these rockers are don't see that in north dakota or minnesota that's for sure what'd you find bentley it's like a weird lunch pack, but all gummy. What? I'll be dipped. You got the <laughs> same thing? Yep. Hey, water. Good choice, man. Jessica's trying to decide if she's going to drive the vanishing paint or the truck and trailer through El Paso. Car would probably be better, but she's so little, she has to sit on a pillow. What do you think? Well, 
So which one you going to drive today, you think? Well, I really, really love this. I want to drive this, but I can't really reach the pedals <laughs> very well like I can. Got your pillow? <laughs> yeah, I got to sit on a pillow and it could be a maybe poofier one even, but um, I definitely want to drive it, but because I can't reach the pedals like too good that I don't want to get stuck like in a situation in traffic where I'm like, yeah. you know, I so, wrecking the car. As, as weird as this is to say, if I'm going to wreck the car, I can't be responsible for wrecking the Vanishing Paint Challenger, so I think <laughs> I'd rather wreck the truck. <laughs> okay, well I think I'm going to go over here and warm up the engine a little bit before we hit the interstate. Swung into O'Reilly's here and grabbed some necessities. You fellers must be buying up that T4 and T6. I can hardly find it anymore. So I grabbed this VR1. It's got the high zinc in it and also a little zinc additive. I don't know. It says racing on it. Sure. Why not? Got a Wix filter for an oil change. Not sure when we're going to do that. Maybe in Bogota. They got a lift we can probably use. Got some Berryman. We'll pour that in. And then this says stops, leaks. Doubtful very, but we're gonna pour it in anyway. Either and or, we need the juice side of it, so we'll see what happens. Yeah. We gotta seal her up, see, so she don't leak out. Well, the guy's got the power steering properly overfilled, so that's fine. The interstate that we need to be on is right here, actually, so we're just gonna jump on and put some miles down. <laughs> Fueling for, I think, the last time tonight. Then we're gonna scoot over to Donald's and put some groceries down the neck. Listen, fellas, Big Macs, they're tasty, but they're expensive. Do this instead. Double cheeseburger, plain, add Mac sauce and lettuce. Oh, wait a minute. Cancel, going to Whataburger. 
Well, we got about another 135 miles we want to try to put down tonight. The car is running absolutely fantastic. I just hope nothing happens to it. It's actually really late right now. We're getting pretty tired. Well, good morning. Start of day trace, I think, somewhere around there. We did not make it the 800 some miles. We did get about 625 though. Not too shabby overall. This coffee tastes like someone swept a workbench off at the farm and added a little water. It's pretty good. I feel terrible for my little humans. They don't know when to sleep and when to be up and we've been back and forth between time zones and you name it. This is really typical for me, but they're not used to it. But we took a family vote yesterday and we all said, well, let's run hard yesterday. And then today we can have kind of more of a regular day, if you will. Today's gonna be a lot of fun because we're about Three and a half, four hours from Bogota, Texas, which is where we've been trying to get this whole time going back. And we're gonna see our friends over at the Restored Channel because I bought their 1935 Ford pickup, sight unseen. I've never seen the thing, ever. So we're gonna walk around that, give you guys a sneak peek, and then I gotta get like a parts list, you know, of all the stuff I need. The plan is to fly back to Texas soon, see if I get this thing running and drive it all the way home but it needs a lot of work so we have to even see if that's you know a potential or not gonna do the usual this morning here gotta hook up my ignition key check the earl stuff like that and also the tow pig needs a fuel filter before we can leave town and it's out of death and we don't want that puppy to go into limp mode or whatever they call it. I don't know. It's where it doesn't go regular go. I think that's about it for this rig. It's been running really good. It hasn't used a single drop of oil, which is incredible. Oh, by the way, that weird snake oil juice that I threw in the PS pump. Yeah, it didn't do anything. Well, maybe it slowed it down a little. There's still some in it. It only leaked a puddle, yay big. So it's getting better. Finish my coffee and we'll hit a parts store. Well, the springs was wore through the seat, you know, just poking a guy up a little bit. Ruined my bad pants, dang it. So I did the right thing and bought the worst seat covers money could buy. The fact that there's a 70 Challenger with a saddle seat cover now, makes me feel pretty good inside. Guy got to thinking, Sure, it would be nice to have a fuel gauge today. Looking close at this, the Robin power from the dimmer switch, shooting that back to the running lights. And I believe this dark blue wire here, I'll trace it in a minute in the trunk. This should be the sending unit for the fuel. So I think what I might could do is unplug this for now, plug this into here. We'll fire this up and see if we got a fuel gauge. And then we can run the fuel gauge during the day and then at night all we got to do is just pluggerize that back up to get our running lights it shouldn't affect our headlights because these are tied together here it's just looping power back around there so give me a sec i'll get that plugged in and see what we got what do we got what do we got now can you see it i can't see nothing it's in the way of this guy we could be pretty close to empty based on how we ran last night. I'm gonna leave it plugged in for now because either way, I don't have brake lights. We'll go get some fuel this morning and then we'll move this a little bit and see what we got there. Now I gotta run over to the tow truck and uh, throw a fuel filter in it quick. They didn't have any wicks in stock, so we're gonna go with the MicroGuard. Smells terrible, but looks fantastic. I'm grabbing a coffee for Jessica before we leave. Look what's in the mirror. 
Just filling up here, getting ready to rip. First stop, 200 miles in the heart of Texas. I've never been to a Bucky's. Go ahead and put that on the list. There's got to be 42 million fuel pumps and all that stuff. They got everything in here, including a movie theater. Nope, they don't have that. But there's a lot of stuff. Not only gas station, foods, barbecue, and you know, what do you call this? Mercantile? Sure. Look at this guy. Five window. Pretty neat rig. I mean, a Bob Ross Bucky shirt. How could you not buy one of these? Absolutely. I'll take two. Fellettes, they even got one of those smelly sections for you. I gotta get out of here. I can't breathe. We made it to the Vintage Car Museum in Weatherford, Texas. This whole place is just the cars we're seeing stuff through the glass here we're gonna grab some tickets hopefully i can film and bring you guys with me super nice guy there's actually no admission here this whole place is run on donation only to keep the lights on so we put quite a few bucks in the box for them because that's awesome that they do that there's several different galleries feller said we're just going to start walking through here beautiful packard right here another packard Ooh, this is a it's like a 30 Buick. It's in really nice shape. Look at the wood spoke wheels. A taxi. 20 cents. What a deal. 36th President of the United States. There's even the title. Right there. Very cool. Beautiful 41 Packard. Original paint here. Which one do you like, Bradley? I do like that green one too. They look so good with color on them. I think Henry Ford said you could paint them any color you want as long as they're black. 22 Ford. That looks just about like me, except it's AS3 certified. That is one clean Suzuki. Still got the nubs on the tire. Really nice restoration. I like that color blue. 28 Studebaker. Moses sandals. There's a bunch of it. Down here there's some more too. 1939 Elvis. That's a sharp looking rig. Look at the rows of seats in there. One, two, Three, there's four rows of seats in that thing. Well, that's pretty neat. That's a going to town family rig right there. Nice, it's not really a red red, it's like a wineish red. I don't know what color that is. I can tell that it's a lacquer paint job though. Can you see that, Shellers? Probably not. That's definitely lacquer. This is really cool because you can kind of see the evolution of, you know, a wagon going towards a vehicle got some chains on here and whatnot got some rubber pressed on the wood spokes it's a 1911 reo and this is from is it michigan i believe pretty cool that's a nice little collection most of those are private owned but i guess there's a couple that are in there on display from other folks and they have another warehouse the guy was saying that they rotate in a few other vehicles, so the display changes, which is really cool. But we're gonna swing over to Whataburger, and grab a bite, I think.
So we just pulled up at the restored shop here in Bogota, Texas. If you guys haven't checked these folks out on YouTube, I mean, I pull stuff out of tree rows. These guys pull stuff out of Texas tree rows. And I'm talking like vines and chainsaws and it's wild. And of course he's working on something out here. How's it going, man? Pretty good, how are you? Good, good to see you again. Good to see you, man. What do we got here, Rambler? Yeah, 62 Rambler. We pulled it off the farm and it was completely packed full with a rat's nest. You could see the carburetor and the, uh, the oil filter there, so. <laughs> That's an old Holly one barrel, isn't it? Yep. Wow. Yep. Does it run? It does now. It does now, yeah. It was locked up solid, so me and Dad fought it and fought it, and after knocking a hole in the piston, and <laughs> <laughs> replacing wow. the piston and piecing it back together, she does fire up now, so wow. now see if she'll move. I haven't got to try out the transmission yet, but. Very cool. If you guys want to see the story of this thing, go over the Restored channel. Sounds like they might clean it up or something. It's really cool in person. And uh, it's nice that you had the perseverance to kind of fight through that stuck engine. I've been there a few times. Yeah, it was one of those things where you really ain't got nothing to lose. So just keep digging into it until you something breaks more or you fix something, I guess. It's got one wiper. Yeah, at least it's on the right side, ain't it? Right. Awesome. Well, you mind if I go take a look at the Ford pickup? No, not at all. I'm Just excited to see it. Just make yourself at home. So. Thanks, man. Appreciate right. it. Good all seeing right. you. Thank you, sir. See ya. Well, here it is. 1935 Ford pickup. These folks didn't build it. They bought it. Did a little work on it. I saw some pictures of this thing. And I actually saw it just briefly in person a while back when I was here working on a 57 Chevy in the shop. And I knew that someday I was going to walk away with this thing. It's a perfect amount of rat rod and, you know, going to town rig. Fuel tank. Secondary auxiliary fuel tank. It's got a clicky clacky and I think a mechanical fuel pump. I think that white wall is painted on. That's fine. Interior is about perfect. Everything a guy needs and doesn't. Kind of an odd pedal setup. Whoa. Note to self, seat isn't bolted in or whatever that apparatus is. License plate floor, that's a factory option on 35. Obviously it's been chopped around here. Pretty decent job on the outside. Not so much gooderish on the inside here. Back in here. So here's the best part. We're not going to take a full tour. It'll be coming up soon. But something you're not going to expect as a power plant. Jessica, you want to show them real quick? Mopar power. Look at that. Well, we hope that it runs. I don't know how many miles we are from home yet. Five, six hundred miles probably. Yeah, like maybe even further actually. The headlights and taillights are known not to work. Brakes are sketchy. They had it running a while back for a little bit, but it had some water in the engine, some other issues with it. So we're gonna take a parts list. Obviously we need tires. I mean, these are good, you know, but maybe, I'll send a set ahead, just in case. Charging whirler isn't working, fuel make it happener. They might have an extra one, I might order one just in case. We're gonna need some, we're gonna need some switches for probably the brakes. I'll get like a universal switch, and then also some switches for like the headlights and maybe even the blinkers. This is his good battery I'll need one of them so just miscellaneous stuff like that have on the ready so I'm not quite sure when but we'll be back pretty soon to take a stab at this thing see if we can get it running they get it from Texas all the way back to Tennessee if you guys are excited or looking forward to this bleep bloop down there in the comment and also any suggestions you have for modifications or factromizing put them down there too Maybe a guy can snazz it up on the way home. Just leaving their shop here, some of the nicest folks you'll ever meet. They not only do they save cars, but they save some of the most bizarre and 
just cars that I would even look at and go, I don't know about that. Some of the off-brand, a lot of European stuff, but they do a really good job. So now we're gonna keep on cruising. Texarkana was our first goal, but I guess that's only an hour away. So we've got uh, well, about three and a half hours of sunlight left. So we're gonna keep cruising and see how far we can get tonight. I got updates. We just ate supper, filled up with fuel, sitting in a Walmart parking lot, Jessica's grabbing a motel. We did not gain back our fuel gauge, but look at this guy up here just shining away. That definitely makes up for it. We got about an hour and 42.79 minutes left tonight, and I think we're gonna shut her down. Car's running great. Fingers crossed we make it. Dawn's early light. Family's sleeping while they're doing that. I'm getting ready. I'm gonna do an oil change on this real quick. This car has been blasted from LA now all the way to Arkansas at 3,000 plus RPM and had a dozen track pulls done on it. So I think it, you know, deserves the $30 treatment at least. Plus, get this up in the air here a little bit. I can show on you guys some more of this upgraded front suspension. Not sure what just fell off, but sounded good. Keep going. Oh yeah, there's stuff and things down here. Huh. Can we bring this some more? I think that's all that can be brought. So as you can see, we've got a couple goodies in here. They did a great job doing this on a budget as well. There's a thicker upgraded torsion bar back there. That's a big help stiffening up the front. Upgraded sway bar here. These help a lot. These are stiffening plates. This bottom control arm actually will flex on you under duress or hard steering. The welding in this plate here makes that as solid as a rock. That really helps. This is upgraded. You can tell because of the way that it is. The OE ones have two big bushings in here, rubber bushings. And what ends up happening is you get a lot of flex here. This moves back and forth, which allows your control arm to move back and forth. This has a heim joint in it. So this ain't moving nowhere. And obviously it's fully adjustable there. So that's also a big help. It's got polyurethane bushings through the whole thing. And then it's got QA1 single adjustable shocks not the fancy double later ones but that also helps tremendously and then of course in the rear there there's also a rear sway bar so that's kind of most of the steering goodies probably not all i'm sure i'm missing something but that's what makes this thing stick to the road and then of course these really nice niddle tires which are getting down there actually while that's draining, I'll get this filter off here. Notice the power steering pump is still leaking like a 70 single wide trailer house. So I'm gonna do the right thing and just keep pouring snake oil in it and rebuild it on the way home. Later or sooner, that's gonna have to be addressed. I'm gonna have to look into some options on that. Yeah. Ooh, this is on there. Yes. Uh-oh. Well, how does a guy even get in here? Is what I want to know. Well, I can't. I can't. Well, 47.3 minutes later, my third wrench. I'm now finally moving the filter about 16th of an inch at a time. So that's good. Thing is on there tighter than JLo's jogging pants, and I ain't kidding you. Maxed out. Oh. Did I finally get it? Probably not. <laughs> Why? Why over here? What flavor? 
STP. Good, good. Take it. I get asked a bajillion questions on engine oil. Biggest thing is, feller, if you got an old engine running a flat tappet cam, use whatever you want to use. Just make sure that it's got zinc in it. Otherwise, you can tear your cam or lifters up. If you're unsure, they make data sheets for every kind of oil flavor. You can dig through it and check that out. Or just pick up a bottle like this. What is this? TB Zinc Plus. And then you're extra sure you're adding the vitamins that she needs. Fire this thing up, build some oil pressure here. Most likely going to clatter for just a second, you know. Oh. See, my security system does work. Fooled me. <laughs> there we go. pounds. Yeah, she's climbing. Good to go. Well, my temporarily permanent hood pin fix didn't last this sheared off a long time ago cut up Freiberger's iPhone cord that was in the car and kind of cobbled her on there but she was coming all the way up down the highway you know found this wire down here doing the Earl change this morning must have been the old hood release oh, that's a floppage I'm gonna try to make something out of that I think if I double this over or something Jessica came running over here Bin. Where'd you find that? Just an extra on the trailer. Yeah, that's a lot better. Put that in, see if it fits. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe we just push it all the way. Oh, maybe not. That should work. Oh. That'll be fine. Right. Thanks. That's much better. Yep. Well, we made it like eight miles or something. So that's good. No, a little bit longer than that. First stop for fuel is going to be Memphis. Hood pin test complete.
went ahead and misjudged the old MPGs. Apparently sitting in traffic there for that 35 minutes where that car wreck was, really chewed on the gasoline. We're not that far from home, so I sent Jessica, she's gonna go all the way to the house, get a different rig without a trailer, bring a gas can back. Meanwhile, we're sitting here in a tornado watch. That's, that's fine. Whew, what kind of flower is this? We're hanging out up here on the side of the interstate way up in the brush. I don't have flashers on the car and I don't like the idea of sitting on it, especially with my little boy. I think we're safer up in here and I don't know, we're just playing around in the trees, found some snakes. Maybe we'll find some other stuff. I don't know. I know you can't see anything. It's an absolute downpour. We're back in the car hiding out. I'm flipping the headlight switch up and down, which should give us the flasher effect. Just working on that carpal tunnel, you know. Sure is a nice night though. Oh yeah, it's great. Jiggle, jiggle. Phillips screws. Hey guys, up top, up top, top, down low. Too I slow. knew it. I knew you were going to do that. <laughs> we made it. What a trip. Pretty sketchy pulling a truck and trailer. Thanks for doing that. Yeah, it was really scary. I don't think I'll ever drive through Dallas Fort Worth again, even <laughs> if I don't have a trailer, but. It's hard enough, but she had a dually crew cab plus the big truck kids I mean it really wasn't I, I wasn't nervous at all it didn't bother me except for going through Dallas and Fort Worth yeah, that, that was, was I was pretty sketched out in this just getting jerked over the road well the road that construction. huge um that like bridge thing that we went over it felt Suspension like we bridge. were yeah it felt like we were like a thousand feet in the air and I was so scared <laughs> favorite part of the trip doing burnout from the challenger that's a good one your favorite part right there in space museum Ooh, that's a good one your favorite part lawsuit doing a burnout Lawsuit at the duct tape drags doing a burnout. All good ones. What about your favorite part? Um, I would have to say being at the event, meeting everybody, and just being at the track. That's always so much fun to me. I, I really enjoy that. I agree. That was fantastic. We met so many of you. It was mind-bottling how many came out. And we love that. Not only get to meet you face-to-face, -face, but the fact that we're supporting the culture together and keeping these events alive. That's really huge. All told, it took us four days instead of three little over 1,850 miles and who cares how much in gas because this family had at least a million smiles and that's what it's all about. Thanks guys for watching. Appreciate you very much. We'll see you next time. <laughs>